Hey everyone, welcome back to Garner Reviews. Today, doing a little bit of screw testing with the Makita TD173 as well as the XDT19, the Festool TID18. We're gonna get all those together. We're gonna see how these are performing and then I'm gonna give you my review of the Makita TD173. Let's get on into it. All right, we are back. So I've got my lineup here. Now, the Festool and the Makita XDT19, these two here, they're going to share the same bit holder. So I'm gonna move between them. And then the um, Makita XDT, or excuse me, the TD173, this is, uh, because it's built in Japan for the Japanese market, the um, collet and the chuck here are basically a little bit different instead of the uh, typical nine millimeter here. I'll just show you, it's a little easier to see. So this is typically spaced out. Hopefully you can see that on the camera there. And you can see how much longer this Japanese style is. So this is sits back in here deeper. Now, uh, a lot of people use these, have no issues. This is like your typical one that you would find, like a um, an E6 or, or something like that. So. Um, but the Japanese one is a little bit longer. I think it, the difference is like nine millimeter versus 13, somewhere in there. So uh, so that's gonna go in here. What I've done, is this is a bit holder I got from Japan and I actually took and epoxied in a, a piece of steel down in here that was four millimeters so that now my little quarter inch um, bits will fit in there as they sh are, you know, should so they won't overseat down in there and I can actually use them. So we'll use the same bit across all three. That way it's pretty uniform. And then the Festool and the uh, XDT19 will share the bit holder as well. So we're gonna start out here though. We got a big old uh, two by six here and it's going into a, there's like some sort of fur um, eight by eight that I found. Start off these two and a half inch Spax fastener and we'll just do, let's do two per impact and we'll just kind of move through here. Let's see, I believe those are all T20s. So we're gonna snap that in there. We'll start with XDT19. Everything is fully charged. I'll show you guys that. Ready to go. High speed right there. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, we'll start over here. Very fast. Very, very fast. We'll drive one more. Again, two and a half inch SPACs. Got away from me there. Whew. So, very, very fast. This has a lot of speed behind it and then you can hear the impacts. This is a uh, three and a half inch Spax. We'll do two of those. No issues there. No issues. One more, three and a half inch. Very, very clean performance. Very, very awesome. Now I know that's loud. I'm gonna try and um, tone that down a little bit. So if you don't hear me talking for a second, I'm trying to work with the mics. Let's do the Fest tool next. We're gonna re change up this order here. Full charge. And we are on the highest speed setting on the Fest tool, TID 18. I absolutely love this unit. Very ergonomic in the hands. So here we go, two and a half inch specs. We'll go center this up a little bit more. Thank <laughs> you. 
absolutely solid performance there. That drives incredibly well. Very, very nice. Um, again, that is easily within, I would say, my top five impact drivers. Uh, so, moving on to the newest. Oh, there we go. Got to push it forward backwards there. Okay. So, we are in... There we go. High setting there. Full battery. Awesome ring light. Let's see if the ring light makes this any faster. Absolutely solid. Absolutely solid. I mean, uh, man, to say that one is faster, there was a part of me on, on a couple of them, I almost thought the Fest Tool may have been a hair faster, but if it is, it's, it's not much. Um, and then the performance between these two fills, very, very similar. Looking at the back of them and going through like the speed, uh, you know, they top out the same exact speed, 3600. Uh, followed up with 3,800 impacts per minute. Um, very, very similar. I'm, I'm thinking, honestly, spec-wise, these are identical tools. You're getting the same motor. If you look at the housing and everything, even, up until the, about the nose, that's when that changes, obviously, to deal with the ring light versus the bumper. You got a little difference there. But um, otherwise, this tool looks identical. Um, your handles feel and look the same. Um, obviously this base has shifted back. And so it changes the way this feels in the hand slightly, but um, performance wise, I think you're getting basically this tool. So if you are happy with the XDT-19 and its performance, this is not gonna let you down. Now don't expect it to you know, be more powerful as long as you know that going into it, I think you're gonna be absolutely thrilled with it. Uh, the Fest tool, like I said, this thing, I don't know why it's it's so overlooked. Maybe it's just because when you think of Festool, you know, you don't think of impact drivers necessarily. But it is really seriously one of my favorites. Um, to be completely honest, I don't use it as much as I should. Just because it's very, very nice. And I have a hard time, um, for some reason, using this in situations where I'm afraid of it getting messed up. I don't know why I need to get over that because it's a tool, it is meant to be used. But anyways, you can see incredibly solid performance. None of these had any issue, any hesitation, but we're gonna step it up now because anymore we do not do just your typical decking fasteners with impacts. We do structural stuff, which is awesome. So these are uh, SPACs and they are a six inch structural screw. It's got a big, nice washer head on there, as you can see. Um, these are incredible. I love Spax screws. They do an incredible job. And I think these are a T30, so we're gonna have to switch out bits. Do I have a handy dandy 30? I do, right there. So, we'll start again with the uh, XDT-19. None of this is pre-drilled. I didn't really pay super close attention. I don't know if I'm hitting knots in this seven by seven or six by six, whatever it is. I think it's like a true seven by seven. It's kind of odd, odd size, but um, we're just gonna go for it, right? So we'll do the, uh, yeah, let's do the Makita right here. And we'll put the Festool one here. So XDT 19, still full speed. All right, let's go.
fest tool TID we're gonna go right here yeah right about there that looks good and let's go Incredible. Oh boy, my bit is like locked in there. That is a lot of torque. Let's see if we can loosen it or make it worse. There we go. Broke that loose. This is a uh, Viha like locking bit holder, and for the most part, I've really enjoyed it. I like it locking in there, I don't lose it. Um, that's actually the first time I think I've had it jam up, but otherwise it's been pretty solid. Makita TD173, again, full speed there. So, as you can see, all those can handle that with no real issues there. That's a six inch structural screw, um, and they are just driving it. There's no pre-drilling at all. It's able to handle it. I feel like, honestly, beyond the six, maybe eight inch range, um, you start getting into a territory where these will handle it, but I think you're actually getting into a, into a situation where um, a really good high power drill is going to do the job more efficiently so something to consider i know a lot of guys drive their structural screws all day long with impact drivers no issues there but um, i do think beyond maybe six eight inches um, you actually gain a little bit of efficiency using something like a big uh, you know like a hammer drill or or some sort of cordless drill that that's got some power behind it too so absolutely awesome performance from all three of them though very similar felt like in terms of drive um, very similar uh, vibration and everything. Uh, neither, none of them are dramatically better um, in terms of ergonomics. I love the Fest tool. I love the Makita. I th honestly think the shift in this uh, battery placement could be a big game changer if you're using a tool like this all day. So let's get into the review portion right now and we'll kind of talk this through. So my thought on this is you're getting an incredible impact driver. The uh, trigger is incredibly responsive. You can really um, finesse things if you need to, even in the higher speeds. Uh, Makita and Festool, I would say, are kind of the pinnacle of that right now, at least in the ones that I have tested. Um, again, you can take that for what it is, but uh, that is my opinion at this time that that if you need a very responsive, easy to control trigger, um, Makita Festool kind of kind of really nail that really well. Um, I love the ergonomics on the Makita as well as this Festool, but focus on this. The light is absolutely incredible. It is very bright, but again, you do get some control over that. If you saw my unboxing, you can actually turn that all the way off if you want to. Um, you can, you know, that's its highest setting there. You can see that. And you can see that getting dimmer and dimmer. So you get some control over that. Now, whether that's important for you or not, who knows? Um, I think it's great. Why not have that option, especially with something like a ring light? It is doing such a great job of illuminating the entire surface. There's no hot spots, there's no, you know, shadows, anything like that. It is just incredible. Uh, Let's see here. Let me get that back on. Oh, did I get it? What have I done? Have I broken it? Oh no. There we go. I guess I need to pull the trigger. So, to make it actually illuminate. So, again, incredible. Uh, downsides, if you import this in, you are gonna have to deal with this, uh, you know, longer, bit uh i guess this is your call it so you know a different sized call it uh you can fit 
let me show you here. Here's your typical one. Again, this is like the like an E6 or C6. Now it fits in there just fine. It locks, you cannot remove it, but you can see the amount of play there. Now, I think there's been plenty of people who run this. They have no issues. I have heard of people saying, hey, I've had it bind up on me and I can't get it back out. And you kind of have to force it out. Um, so whether or not you're comfortable with that, you know, that's up to you. Um, you can come up with different solutions. There is an actual little, uh, little spacer from Makita that you can actually put in here and it fixes it. It would eliminate that, but there's no real way of keeping it in there. Like if you're to tip the unit forward, it's going to just slide out if this is not in here. So, um, unless you're willing to take one apart and replace it with like a, you know, North American style, call it, you're just going to have to be aware of that. So maybe an issue for some people, I figured for the price of this, um, I'm going to play with that, that epoxy. We'll see how long that piece in there lasts. Wasn't a hard process, but, um, we'll see. And that just kind of takes out, you know, all that slop that looks like a normal, normal amount of play. So, and now, because I do run a lot of just your typical, uh, one inch bits, I have an easy option here. So it's just great. So I think, I think this has got a lot of potential. I love this new design. I would love to see Makita kind of stick with this. I like the controls in the back. Um, you know, being able to see what you're doing without actually moving and tipping this back as you're running it, you're always seeing everything. Your battery displays here, you know, your, 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 uh, controls are there. So even, even the fact that now you have a, you know, a selector switch here, which they've had on a couple generations now, but the fact that you're not moving the thing, you can actually have it in position, ready to go. And you can cycle through and actually see what you're doing. It's pretty awesome. So I like this. I will say, because this has shifted back now, you end up when you get your hand around it, let's do it this way. You can see right here, there's more of my hand engaging versus this one, right? Because it's pulled back, so it's getting back into more of my hand. Now, if you have really big wide hands, that may be, may be an issue and it may not be actually as comfortable for me. It fits my hand just fine. I have no issues there, but again, that's going to be a very personal thing. And de you know, depending on your hand size there, performance, absolutely stellar. I am more than happy with it. I'm not driving anything that's beyond like a six or eight inch structural screw. And if I get into something that's much larger, I'm probably pre-drilling or I'm stepping up into a very high powered, uh, uh, drill driver. So that's kind of my, my typical use case. So I don't know. What do you guys think? What was the performance like? I think this is an awesome unit. Uh, last thing before I forget, include belt clip is actually different. I don't know if you guys have noticed that yet, but it's actually deeper. I like it. It actually goes in the pocket. It stays in the pocket better or wherever you're hooking this, you know, if you get a lot more area there, the only downside, this little two amp hour battery, it is, you can see, it is shorter than the actual belt clip. So if you set it down, this thing tips at an angle, it's kind of awkward. So, um, they must, you know, this must be kind of designed for maybe it's your three amp hour packs and above. I think the three amp hours have full, you know, it's a larger pack. So, um, maybe this isn't designed for two amp hour packs in mind, but just something to be aware of. I don't know. I'm a big fan. Makita TD173. You guys let me know what you guys think. Is it awesome? Is it not? Would you guys buy one? Uh, Price-wise, I know they're still pretty expensive, but honestly, they're I think they were right in line with what the XDT19 was when they were first out. So I would assume this is going to come down in price in a, you know six months to a year. So if you don't mind waiting, maybe it's worth it to you. But you guys, let me know what you guys think. I appreciate all the comments. I enjoy engaging with you guys. I say it every time, but that's because I absolutely mean it. I have so much fun responding and chatting with you guys in the comments section. So please keep doing that. And if you feel like subscribing and being awesome, you know what? 
I appreciate that too. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.